Hi, my name is Mark. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Today I have a special project to share. My friend sent me a pinball machine for repair and after repairing I found out that it's quite a boring machine. Because although it's very interesting how it works, it doesn't have sound. All it does is activate mechanical switches, it has relays and it has some mechanical motors that make sound. But unlike a modern pinball machine, it doesn't play music or whatever. So I decided to do an upgrade to add some sounds. I'm going to show you how I did it. I will take you through the hardware, the software, and I will show you the inside of the pinball machine. So let's get started. So first thing we need to do is build an optical interface to isolate the input power from the pinball machine from our electronics because the pinball machine has a lot of interference it has more than 100 mechanical relays and switches which produce a lot of sparks and i don't want that interference on my microcontroller or my amplifier for that matter so first we're going to build an optical interface to isolate the input triggers from our electronics optical isolators will be put on the board and I'm using sockets for that so if ever I destroy one I can easily exchange them you know it's a lot of pins but it's okay I'm going to make eight channels so I can create eight isolated triggers from the pinball machine that I can use to trigger the microcontroller to play individual sounds and if we insert the optocoppers like so make sure they're all inserted correctly it means the dot will go to the right side in this case okay so the way those optocouplers work when i put an input voltage on one side it will transmit a light to the other side internally and it will change that light into an output signal and that way the input and the output trigger are totally isolated from one another that way i can keep my pinball machine power supply separated from my microcontroller power management so basically what I'm going to do is this is the input side and I'm going to add a resistor and a diode and a small capacitor on the trigger side of the optocoupler. And I'm going to do that for all 10 and then I will start soldering. So I got all the resistors and diodes in place. Now I'm going to solder them and then after that we'll add the capacitors. Now let's add the capacitors. These are just 100 nanofarad capacitors to you know, smoothen out the input signal a little bit. So I already put some capacitors in place. Basically the function of those capacitors is just to smoothen out the power voltage because each of the coupler gets 5 volt input or 3.3 volts input and the capacitors are connected between those 3.3 volt and ground. So each capacitor has a little buffer to take down any spikes. And then of course we have to add the pull up resistor for the output which goes between the power in and the output which is pin 6 in this case. And we do that for each optocoupler like so and then i will have to add an output rail which goes right there i will not connect each and every individual pin but rather this than cutting up uh, single strips of two pins and then have a lot of work keeping it in place so i'm just going to do it like this and the same goes for the input where i will put a little strip there and i soldier that and then the optical board is finished except from the bottom side i'm going to start with the capacitors because when I cut those wires, I have space to properly deal with the resistors. So I added uh, the connectors and I added some wires, which basically are two lines for ground and 3.3 volts. That way I don't need to wire up the bottom. I can just cross out the ones I don't need to have it all wired up. And now we're going to solder these parts. So now all I need to do is cut away the traces in between the IC sockets and I have to cut a few traces here and then we're good to go. So I will get my Dremel and get started.
And there we have it, one nice optical interface board. After completing the optical interface, it's time to select a uh, way of playback for the MP3 files. And for that, I can use several electronics that I used in projects before. The first one we have is based on an Arduino Nano, and I use that in stress level indicator that I built in an earlier video. We'll put the link below so you can check that out. But there's one big disadvantage on this electronics. It only has 8-bit and direct output, and it's not really a nice audio file coming out of the electronics. So when I amplify it, it will sound kind of crappy. Another option is to use a Arduino Uno with a real MP3 shield. That will give me the quality I need, but I learned that there's kind of a delay between the input trigger and the actual start of playing of the audio files. We could use an MP3 trigger board from China, which basically has like nine trigger inputs to play audio files directly. It has an onboard amplifier and it would be perfect. Or we can use the same electronics I use for my talking head. Since I have some boards around, I'm going to use that. Don't worry, I will show you the schematic, so if you don't have the board, you can just use a breadboard. It's not that complicated, but it's perfect for what I need because it has uh, many trigger inputs and it has onboard audio and I could even add Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in the future if I want to. So the schematic is uh, based on the one I did for the Talking Head a previous project. I just took out what I don't need. And if you're going to use the ESB32 USB interface as a power supply, then you don't need to bother to assemble the onboard regulator and power parts. You only need the SD card interface, which is right here, the amplifier board, and of course, your inputs. And that's all there is to it. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community, where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! One thing I love about this mechanical pinball machine is the way it's constructed. Just look at the way they create pulses. The pulses are used to give different score to each target and they're just using a mechanical wheel to create as many pulses as needed. This is really amazing. Transistorless pinball, wow. Okay, back to the electronics. So I'm going to add this board that I had from the talking head. I'm going to add that on the board here. Yeah, and that will do. And then I'm just going to solder that one. So basically what I did, I extended the socket that holds the ESP32, I extended it down to the bottom to this PCB that gives me access to all available pins on the ESP32. So that's easy when I have to decide what I open in studios. And that's the only reason. And then I have to add the audio transformer. And I suggest to put it right there. Yeah, I will have to add some wires from this optical interface here going to this one. And of course, I will do that at the bottom. So that's this row connecting to those pins. And of course, the audio transformer, I will have to add an output pin. So it's becoming quite a nice board. We have our optical interface. We have our sound board, which basically is an ESP32 and an I2S audio board. And of course, it has a little SD card holder. So I can put an SD card in with the sound files. As you can see, I can just take it out because I use sockets, which is quite convenient. And the same goes for the audio transformer. I can take it out in case I don't need it and I can just add wires. Or if I want to change the transformer into a stronger or a weaker one, no problem. The wiring itself, it's not that spectacular. We need to connect a ground wire and a VCC, the 5 volts wire for our optical interface. Or the 3.5 volts, I must say, because our optical interface uses 3.5 volts because our, our ESP32 has a 3 volts input and not 5 volts. The good thing about the way I build this electronics, I don't need to modify this antique pinball machine. I just will add some wires and those wires will go to my optical interface and if needed I can take out everything in a blink of a second. Okay, the audio this one produces is only three watts and that's not enough to uh, be louder than the mechanical sounds of the pinball, so we need to amplify that. Before connecting this to an amplifier, I am going to use an audio transformer. 
and the audio transformer basically isolates the output power from the audio going to the input power on the amplifier. And the reason I do that is that I can eliminate uh, digital noise from the ESP32. And it's an extra isolation layer uh, for my audio because I don't want to blow out any speaker later. So if I need it, not sure yet, so I can always take it out and hotwire it but I'm going to put it there on a socket so it's easier to use it when I need it. So all I need to do is cut a hole. Nah, we're not going to cut a hole. Really? A cut a hole? No. I'm not going to destroy this pinball. I have a special speaker and the speaker I have is actually a resonator. It's also a speaker, but basically what it does, it's a coil on a high power magnet, usually neodyne, and then you just attach this to a surface and the whole surface will become your speaker. So I don't need to create a hole and that's perfect. So let's take a look at the inside of the pinball machine. We have our wires and the old contact switches, the relays, a transformer and basically it looks old because it's really old. Here is the board I added. It's a ESP32, uh, an optical interface. And if you're wondering what the extra board does, please take a look at the project page. I will explain it there in detail. Uh, it's a little modification I did to my optical interface. Here is the amplifier and here are two speakers. There is a normal speaker and there is a speaker exciter and what an exciter does basically you attach it to a surface and the whole surface will uh, turn into a speaker. Of course we have our socket that I added with a switch so it's easy for me to switch on and off the extra features. In case somebody don't want to use it you can just switch it off. This is the power supply of the amplifier and that's all there is to it. Okay, so the sketch is made up of one file called pinball.ino and basically what it does, we first initialize some libraries and declare some variables. We run a setup once to get things going and then we continuously loop through the main loop looking for activation of pins. And when a pin is activated, I will play a sound. For this audio function, you need to install a library. I put a link here. And once you download that, you can add that by going to the library manager Say so include libraries at zip file and then you point to the downloaded zip file and install it. Uh, the same goes for the board. You need to install the ESP32 board files and if you haven't already you first have to add the link to where to find the boards and for that you go to preferences and click on additional board managers and then you add this specific link. So once you've done that you go to the board manager and in the board manager, you can add the ESP32 boards. And I prefer not to use the 2.0 version because uh, of some known bugs in there. But it might work for you, you can try. But this one I used is 1.0.6. Once you've done that and you loaded the file, basically you can press compile and upload and it will start uploading to your ESP32 board. There's one thing you need to know about this file. I use two sound banks and depending on the input uh, pin, uh, let me see, 13, it plays a file or one library or a second library. And the difference is that the one library uses sound naming like sound one, sound two, sound three, sound four, etc. But the other sound bank uses sound 1B, sound 2B, sound 3B and so on. Depending on the state of that pin, it will play the sound from bank one or bank two. And of course we have an intro file, so that's two times eight files. And that's all there is to it. So let's upload this to the board and see what our pinball machine can do. So it's time for demonstration with the added soundboard. That's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to visit the Element 14 community. There's lots of info on how I did it, why I did it. And if you have any questions, then uh, you can ask them there and I'll do my best to answer each and every one of you. This project is finished. I'm going to start on a new one. And until then, I see you next time.